O ist er schön, o ist er schön, so was hat man lang nicht gesehen, so schön, so schön. Hello my soccer universe, what a gem of a soccer weekend for me. I think for the first time in my life, my team, Lask in Austria and my other favorite team, Milan, both sit atop of the table and it's not the second league, it's the first league. This has, in my soccer life, never happened. Very, very happy. So, uh, you see the background here changed a little bit. If Lask sits on top, they gotta sit on top. And so the lower part is now reserved for Germany and everything else is all Lask, 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 Lask. I'm wearing my absolute favorite Lask jersey from the 96, uh, 97, 97, 98 season. That is how a Lask jersey, in my opinion, should look like. It has everything but that's a different story. Uh, so yeah, headlines, and we will start for once in Austria, although there was a huge game in Germany, uh, and some huge happenings there as well, but we have to start in Austria for, because it's my soccer universe. Uh, we have Salzburg losing to last place at Mira, allowing Lask to go top. That's the headline there. In Germany, the big clash at top of the table ends with a draw, and also many, many goals scored and actually quite some beautiful goals there as well. And maybe the last head headline came yesterday, Leverkusen joining the race for the title. Let's see. As I said, for once we'll start in Austria and yeah, the game that really tipped everything around. We know Salzburg did well in the Champions League. They have now a final against Atletico Madrid coming up. So, of course, uh, Jesse March is going to make some changes. And yeah, still, so much lines on, were playing, but everything, everything, I mean, it was still a really good team out there that dominated the game uh, as you would, would expect, but they just didn't go the last step in many, many ways. Uh, Admira had some chances er early on, but uh, the goal that actually won uh, them the game uh, came in the 69th through Kirschbaum. And Salzburg cannot find an equalizer. It was one of those uh, days where it just was not meant to happen. So yeah, uh, that was the that was the, really the big result of that that round. Although there were others that are quite remarkable. I think Sturm Graz's four 0 demolition of Austria Wien is something I really did not expect. Um, I know Sturm is doing quite well, as, as we'll see in the table. They're actually remarkably close up there. Uh, they. Took a first half lead in the, to Nemet and then a uh, red card for Austria in the 70th basically sends everything uh, tailspin. Sturm Graz, they have to make a second, third, and then a stoppage time, a fourth. Um, big crisis, I would have to say, in Vienna at the moment. Uh, the other Vienna team uh, tried to pull the trick. The coach is just such a joke. Uh, he kind of said, yeah, if I look at how Hartberg is doing uh, in, with, with the defenders they have and what we have, Hartberg has to be considered the favorites. Yeah, Hartberg has a tenth of the budget that Rapid has. You never, never, ever, even with Europa League. And Rapid is really great. If they play in Europe and then they, they perform in the league, they're the first ones to claim, yeah, because of so many games, we are so poor and we are da, 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 da. That's why... You, I just cannot find much love for this team, uh, especially under the current leadership. But yeah, Rapid did it very quickly. In the second minute already, Arasa 2-0, two, two it was 1-0 at, uh, one nil, uh, two nil at the half. Uh, and just when uh, Hartberg has pulled her back within 10 minutes, they make it 3-1. Easy win and making it tight at the top of the table. And then the, they call it Upper Austrian Derby between Lask and Ried. Personally, for me, uh, it's a local rivalry. It is not the derby. For me, uh, yes, Ried has been over the past 20, 25 years, probably, right, right up until uh, Lask came down and Ried went down. Uh, Lask came up and Ried went down, uh, which was uh, four years, year, years ago, right up until that point. Uh, I will say that Ried has been the better the best team in Upper Austria. They had a great manager, they did uh, things well, they uh, smart dealings, and uh, Lask was just a chaos club in many regards, going way back to the 90s. Uh, and so, yes, it hurts a little bit when the big team from Linz 
uh, that they claim claim to be was always upstaged by the small team from Reed. A, a team where I remember as a fan, I think it was 92 or 993, that they got promoted up for the first time in the professional leagues and then suddenly they start winning trophies. I mean, they've won three Austrian Cups, I think, in the meantime, two, if not three, uh, and finished twice second. So uh, they have been quite successful, but I never, I consider them just a local rival. Um, for me, a team from Linz or even from close by, like Steyr, and uh, that's more of, of Derby of Ried, who, which is uh, about a, almost as much of a drive uh, from uh, Linz to Salzburg. And also historically, the region, this the western band of um, Upper Austria was always closer related to Bavaria. This is actually there's Upper Austria and then there's this uh, Infittel, the in quarter, uh, that is culturally always a little bit different. So for me, calling it a Derby in the strictest sense, yes, for the fans, it's the closest game to go to, blah, blah, blah. I never felt it as a big derby. I felt it more like a local rivalry where the small team has been unfortunately upstaging for most of the time, the big team. Nothing like that yesterday. I think our goalkeeper could have pitched a tent and nothing would have happened. Nothing. Eight at the halftime, last get 80% of the ball. I think this is a, uh, a number that has never occurred in Austria. And I know possession is not everything. But Reed, uh, yes, I think their tactic was to sit deep and hit on the counter because they have two really strong strikers. But I think that actually took away a little bit of their strength. Lask could push, push them around, had uh, maybe not numerous chances, but um, were always on the front foot, had always dangerous situations. And then it needed in the 22nd, a really beautiful shot by Goeginger. Really beautiful shot uh, from the from, from, from the goal's perspective, the right corner of the box into the upper left corner. A uh, really great goal. And from that moment on, there was no come, come, coming back. I mean, uh, in the 45th, they make it 2-0. Uh, a situation that I thought was already done, the ball comes to Eggestein who just expertly uh, uses that he is that the goal is side is covered but uh, two or three uh, defenders so they were very, very compact and he just needles it into the other corner uh, beautifully done utter dom dominance probably could have been three or four as well but uh, on, on, on the other side I have to say there were not too many chances but it was utter dominance second half yeah um, was not a good game any, anymore Lusk just held back quarter of the powers and Reed just could not do anything. I think the most telling stat is although the possession and equal, got more equal, I think at, at the end it was 70-30 or something like that, uh, they didn't have a shot on goal. The big drawback for Lask, of course, was that uh, player, two players went out injured. Michal, I hope, is just a little thing that can be patched over uh, because we have next week a really, really big game. But then uh, Karamoko, who has been scoring his wonderful goal against Spurs, he pulled rather badly, I think, his hamstring, and he just came back from in injury. So that, so that definitely hurts a little bit. But yeah, let's look at the wonderful table. And, you know, I would be all guilty. I mean, I'm going all out here, but I definitely know this is not to last here. Uh, one point ahead of Salzburg, and we will see the next game is in Salzburg. So, um, unless... Uh, yes, we won there earlier this year at one point, but uh, it's not easy. This will not be an easy game, and uh, Salzburg, depending on how they did against Atleti, I think they will go all in in that game. Although, on the other side, it doesn't really matter too much because the points will get halved. When I look at the table, uh, the big um, deceiving part here is Sturm Graz. They have one game less against Wolfsburg. Yes, it's not an easy game, but the way the two teams have been trending as of late um, doesn't uh, give me much confidence that Wolfsburg will get something from Sturm. And Sturm, uh, with those three points, is right up there with Rapid, doing really, really, really well this season. So at the moment, I've, I've, you could call this is a four-way race, although Salzburg is so much ahead of everyone else. And I also have to say, I always have the feeling that the way Lask is doing, yes, we have many injuries now, which could derail the whole thing. But if the team is fit and the way, the way they're playing, it should they're the clear number two. Uh, but, you know, 
uh, Rapid is always, is, is an opponent, we cannot get a great grip of, they have to shoot themselves, so yeah, that's that. And then if you look at the bottom, so the only change is Lask is now top and Admira also moves up with the win, uh, so those are the only two changes. I'm flabbergasted that Austria win is doing so badly. As I said, the next round, everything points to the last game, Salzburg against Lask, that's uh, as good as it gets in Austria. Um, everything else, I mean, you should not say much, I and mean, we have uh, Ried Alltag, that will be important for uh, both teams to get against the relegation fight, get a few points, again, it doesn't matter all that much. Um, Wolfsburg, Austria, those are the two disappointing teams of the season, so that's another one that I would point out. And uh, Tyrol is doing surprisingly well, so let's see if they can do anything against Rapid. We go to Germany. I talk a lot about Austria, Austria this time, but for once, uh, please indulge me. In Germany, it started with the uh, Berlin Derby that went all the Hertha's way until the 23rd minute. At the point, they had one, uh, with one goal up, and then Andrich makes a stupid foul, I think his foot was way too high, sent off. And then the scales start tipping, Hertha is coming back, they get an equalizer Pekarik after the first half. Meanwhile, Piontek also came on and he has been wasteful before, but then within three minutes he makes two goals. Yes, the first one was very much deflected, but the second one he took very, very well. And yeah, Piontek, former Milan player that I actually adored about a year and a half, a year and a half, half ago. Uh, is now scoring for Hertha and getting them their win in the derby. Um, Bielefeld Mainz was a game where Bielefeld was rather lucky. I mean, the first goal through Brittel was twice defected, uh, deflected. Uh, they get the 2 0, but in the meantime, Mainz had uh, great chance chances and were just too. Uh, how, 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 how to say? I don't want to say too stupid, but you know, uh, making not smart moves. Uh, they could have gotten at least a draw. Uh, they get the later uh, goal through Stöger. Eintracht Frankfurt was the better team for the first 20 25 minutes. Uh, got the lead through Kamada after Hinteregger assist. Um, but then it was Dortmund's time. Yes, Holland was out, uh, but Dortmund turned on, got their equals a beautiful goal by Reina. Uh, and probably should have won it. But again, Dortmund draw, dropping points. So we have to see. Where they go. Uh, Köln picks up more points. Uh, twice take, taken a lead through Thielmann and Duda were 2 1 up at half. But to be honest, Wolfsburg was the better team. And I have to say, those Wolfsburg away jerseys currently, I actually do like uh, with the shining green. I kind of made a back note if at the end of the season they are still available and for like half price or cheaper, I might actually pick one of those up. Just saying. Uh, Wout Weichhorst getting the important equalizer there. So I think it was a good draw for Kern, but a rather lar lucky draw for those beautiful jerseys. Then Freiburg Gladbach. Boy, was that a game. Great goals in there. Absolutely great goals. And yeah, Fre Freiburg. I mean, the best thing was in the, in the first half. Uh, Hurler runs on, onto the goal, takes a shot, it goes on the post, although there was only the goalkeeper, he comes back to him, hits him in my chest and goes, goes over, I mean, really unlucky. But then Embolo uh, gets the lead, Leinhardt, wonderful, equal because it was all San Santa Maria's back heel kick, then uh, Vincenzo Grifo with a penalty. Uh, gives the Freiburg lead after the half and then player with another really wonderful goal. This was a great game going up and down, both teams playing well, both going going for the win. Really, really good action uh, there. And then yeah, really good action between Bayern and Leipzig and probably we should spend some time on that, that, that one too because Leipzig played without a striker. And that confused uh, Bayern like crazy. And Emil Forsberg, who was going uh, in midfield, striker and, and, and so on, he was really dominating uh, and confusing uh, the Bayern defense. And so it was actually Leipzig who were better and could take the lead. Uh, Nkunku had a good chance before. Sabitz, I think, once hit the bar. But then deep ball uh, through Nkunku, uh, from Forsberg to Nkunku, who makes a run and... Um, Neuer has to so come out and with one touch and Kunko goes past Neuer and can put it in the empty and, and net and you were kind of a little bit uh, worried about Bayern at that point because they didn't show much. However, uh, Musiala, after Kunko assist, makes it then and he just came out for half Javi Martinez who was injured, makes it 1-1 and a few minutes later Thomas Müller 
typical Bayern fashion, makes it 2-1 and you think, oh yeah, this is the Bayern that, that, that we know. They just score freely as they want, they just need to turn a little bit on. But they didn't uh, think that Justin Kleibert can put also one back. And that's what I did two minutes later. So within really six minutes, there were three goals scored. Absolute madness in, 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 the, in the game. Then, uh, after being a first, a beautiful cross from Angelino and force back. Again, Bayern does not know who should pick up, where should pick up. He has acres of space in the box, header in 3 to Leipzig. And seemingly that killed off the game for, for a while. Uh, because there was nothing happen happening until uh, Koma make, make his crossing and Müller has it in the 75th. In between those two goals, the game was dead. Was There was not much happening. Then it picked up a little bit of speed with chances on both sides, but it ended, I think, in a very well-deserved 3-3 draw. The first half was great. Um, I don't know what happened then in the second that it, it, it petered out a little bit. Uh, didn't see much of the next two games. Uh, Stuttgart Finally won in Bremen again. This has been a while. Um, I think they were tuned up and very late. Bremen pulls one back. And then Leverkusen uh, beats Schalke 3 0, which is something that everyone is doing at the moment. And we'll see now that Leverkusen is in second place. And it's still the question can they uh, get in there? We have to see. Uh, it's, um, I. I don't trust Lever Leverkusen yet, but yeah, we have Bayern, Leverkusen, Leipzig and Dortmund is actually now with a four point difference again. So we have to see. Uh, Dortmund probably has the biggest potential, but they also are the shakiest team of the, I think that Leverkusen and Le Leipzig have a little bit more consistency, but maybe not enough. Leipzig, uh, Le Leverkusen still ha has not lost as, as did Wolfsburg, who are now in fifth, in fifth place. Um, the movements in midfield, you know, we still have the Hoffenheim uh, Augsburg game, which could change a few things, things around, but at least for now, Stuttgart is moving up. And on the bottom, Bielefeld with the win over Mainz gets now in the relegation spot. Um, Köln also seven points. It is still very tight. Uh, I think Freiburg, Köln, Bielefeld, Mainz, Schalke, those are the ones that are really, really in danger of getting relegated. In the next round, I have to say, uh, there's not the. I mean, Wolfsburg Frankfurt is an interesting one, I have to say. Gladbach, Hertha, uh, Dortmund, Stuttgart could, could be a fun game because both are rather are going forward, but you know, um, have to see a big game between the Carnival Towns of Mainz and Köln that could go a long way uh, in the relegation battle. Um, Union Bayern. It's a nice story, but I think Bayern will get an easy win there. And then, yeah, Leverkusen, Hoffenheim, those are two good teams. Well, that was the action from the weekend in the German-speaking countries that I consider. Uh, yeah, um, Switzerland. I don't watch much. I don't have much chance watch, watching the Swiss League, so not having them in there. Anyway, let me know what you thought about these games. I'm still celebrating my favorite team here in Austria, Lask. Uh, again, give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon, as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!